Hey there friends, it is me, HL Mod Tech, and I'm back with one of my favorite lessons. This is called Tinker Bugs, and it was an original design created by Muzz64 on Thingiverse, and I asked him for permission to turn it into a Tinkercad project. It prints in place, and then when you're done, you can squeeze it and the jaws open up. I'm going to walk you through all the steps to make it happen. So my friends, let's get cracking. The first thing I want you to do is make sure you are looking at it from the front. Bring out a box. Drop that box close and then switch so you're looking at that box from the back. So now I've got my back view cube and then I'm going to bring out the work plane. Click on that flat side and finally bring out a round roof. Now we do all this so that when we go back to our front view, which I'm going to just click and switch to, now my half roof is aimed the way I want it to be. I'm going to delete that cube quick and then set the work plane back to normal. Let's click on the sweet fit view to selection and then let's change its measurements. I want you to make that 40 and I want you to make this one 20. And then let's look at it from the front edge so we can see better where the height is. And I want you to make that 15. We need to cut out our bug. And we're going to do that by doing Control D to duplicate. Make the second one a hole. Click on its measurements. And see how it's 40? We're going to take away 6. So that'll be 34. Up here on this edge where it was 20, we are going to also take away 6. So it'll be 14. Take those two items. Select them. Notice it says two shapes selected. And center. And center. If you can't see that center button, if you switch to the corner, it's a little bit easier and you can see them. And you can see that gives us pretty much the same measurements all the way around. And we can group them. So now we've got our bugs body. I'm going to just take this and move it to this little corner here. So just one down so that way it's lined up and it makes it a little easier. You can see it's below zero. So I'm going to hit the letter D to drop it to the work plane we need to slice off the front half of our project and we're going to do that with a whole box when you bring out the whole box i'd like you to hold down shift and stretch it to crazy sizes but then type the number 40 in the box with its rotation stay real close to the shape and rotate it 22 and a half degrees which is one of the tick marks with it rotated I'd like you to grab it and I'd like you to just slide it up so that it's touching that corner or as close as you can get it. If you want to get fancy, you can shut the grid off for a second and that'll let you really get precise, but it's not super important that you're perfect. It's just super close that helps. Then we're going to switch the grid to five millimeters and I just want you to simply move it over two clicks and I want you to pull it down one click. And this is going to give us a sweet angle for the next part that we cut off. Before we cut it, though, I want you to do Control D. And I want you to pull that chunk one more over. And then pull it way down off the screen for a second. Group the two up above by selecting them. Notice it says two shapes and group. Then pull your other shape up. And we only want to take away one chunk. So right here, see how we're even? Go in one chunk more, make sure you're not touching the top, and cut that off. So what we just did is we cut two 22 and a half degree chunks off of our project. Bring out another box, and I need you to take this box, and I need you to change it to size 3. Look at it from a corner, and I also want you to make it 3 here. And make it somewhere in the 20s or 30s long. I don't really care. What I do want to do is rotate it one chunk. So see that 22 and a half? If you move out, it goes one degree at a time. If you stay close to the shape, it's real easy to use those longer tick marks. Now we're going to attach it to this using the amazing work plane tool. When I click on that edge, the work plane is connected to it. And now when I press the letter D, it drops it so that it's connected right to that spot. Now we want this piece to be tucked in. I'm going to set the work plane back to the normal work plane. I'm going to look at it from a top front right corner. 
And now when I move it down and over, it's moving too many millimeters. So I'm going to switch it to one millimeter. And I'm going to come down and over until that is flush with the edge. I like where that's at. So now I'm going to do control D and I'm going to do control up arrow to raise its partner to the very top. So these are going to be the arms that attach to the bottom jaw of our project. Let's cut off the excess really quick with the awesome work plane trick again. This time we're going to use this bottom edge, bring out a box, stretch that box all the way across. And when we group those parts, now it is sliced perfectly. And you can see how when we squish this, this piece and this piece will be separate. Set the work plane back to the ground. Notice I just pressed W, which is the shortcut. And now let's bring out the jaw. We can grab all those pieces and align them to this bottom edge. And then take your lower jaw and squish it to about two or three millimeters thick. I'll let you pick. And then I'm going to make mine 12 long. And that's how far the jaw will stick out. And then remember, we had to make them 15 so they line up with the rest of our cool little bug. I'm going to group those pieces together. And now let's make our bug's head. I'm going to bring out another one of these round roofs. This time I'm going to look at it from the corner so I can find this rotation handle. Staying close to the shape, I'm rotating it 90 degrees. Hitting D to drop it to the correct work plane. And then I need to cut it off at the exact same angle I have here. Check out this sweet trick for doing that. Work plane, hit the angle bring out the whole box and then I can just take the head set my work plane back to the normal ground and I can set it inside that shape to cut it off remember we do need to make it size 15 I pick the spot that I think is going to be cool and when I group those two items check it out my head now fits right inside the shape just like it should the fun thing about the head is you can just grab it and stretch it to make the exact size you want. Once you've got that angle, you don't have to be precise anymore. The last step of the basic bug is to attach this base to the head without touching these two arms. Let's do it with another one of these cubes. Once again, we'll make it three millimeters thick. And we'll make it three millimeters this direction as well. And then when you bring it over, we'll rotate it at least 22 and a half degrees. You can also pick a custom number for this one. And then we need to raise it up. My favorite way is with the control up. So I just moved it up to the middle. You can make sure it's in the center by doing the align button and choosing center. You want to have this poke through right about here so that when you print it, it allows it to all print in one piece. So I'm going to take this angle and I'm going to make it custom. I'm going to just move it to a spot where I'm sure it comes in. See how this comes in right at the bottom. And then I'm also making sure that there's a gap. That is an awesome way to have those joined together. I'm going to group them. And then of course, you've got this crazy piece on the bottom. Well, we can solve that by just doing work plane again, putting it on the bottom here, bringing out this box and stretching it all the way across to cut that all off. Group and then amaze yourself because you have just made a print in place squishable bug. I'm going to rotate him 90 degrees. Make sure he's dropped to the work plane with the letter D. And now you can make your bug custom awesome by adding all kinds of cool things using all your other Tinkercad skills. I'm going to start by real quickly adding eyeballs. When I bring out the sphere, I'm going to hold down shift and squish that eyeball down to a size I like. I'm going to move it over into the head. I'm going to use control up to move it up. And just keep hitting those arrow keys until I find the spot I like. And then I'm going to do control D to make a second one and move that across. So I've got two. You could add a unicorn horn. You can put words on the back. 
I'm going to real quickly add a sweet little mustache. Don't forget you can also go to the characters and add all these cool parts. Always use the work plane so that your part shows up where you want. I'm going to drop the mustache out here, look at it from a corner, rotate it so it's the right degrees, hold down shift to squish it all at once. I am going to group those eyeballs and the body real quick. And the reason I did that was because now when I do work plane and I select them all, I can align my mustache so it's right in the middle as well. And then if I just take my mustache, I want to actually get that work plane back so that way I can push the mustache into the face using the cool cone or better yet control down arrow so I can get it right where I want. You can change your grid if you want, like I'm going to pull it out another half millimeter with control up arrow. I think I like that. I'm going to go down one and then I'm going to group those to attach my mustache. You can add awesome little teeth. I'm going to go back to the basic shapes. And if you do your work plane and set it inside the mouth and bring out a roof, change its measurements to something that looks like a tooth to you. And then you can do your align. Make sure that you center it. Make sure that you set their measurements to the same size. Remember ours was 15. Align, center. And then you can use cool tricks like control D to just nudge those out where they would be so that your little dude can have teeth. Notice I did control D again and it memorized them. I'm gonna take those four and I'm going to group them. Notice it shows me four shapes. I'm gonna do control D and control up arrow to raise them up a little bit. And then let's bust out the sweet flip tool. So boom, we can flip them in one step. I'll do control down to get them to the right spot. And then I also, I don't want the teeth to hit each other's spikes. So if I bring them back two clicks, now they're going inside the mouth at the right spots. Group and take a look at how awesome my little bug is turning out. Set the work plane to the ground and you are ready to print your awesome bug. So hey friends, if you found it useful, please hit that like button. If you've got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you make a sweet modification to it, make sure you share it with us at HLModTech on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button, and last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HLModTech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.